Hello, YouTubies. How are you? Um, this is Marie here. So I thought I'd do a video. Um, I don't know how to start off this video, um, but I'm going to do it the best I can. Now, there's a chance that I may start crying. So to warn you, so if you don't want to watch it, you know, you can move on. You don't have to um, watch this, but I'm sitting here drinking coffee. So I thought I would go ahead and do a video. Um, many of you, some of you who watched my last video, um, I'm sitting in my rocking chair here, um, know that um, my cat uh, passed away. And Loomis was, um, even in my first videos, he would kind of, come in <laughs> you'd see his tail go across the screen um I don't I don't know what to say anyway I lost my cat I ended up well it was more like somebody else made that choice for me um the cat ended up getting euthanized um I even um have that on video which is a painful thing to watch um let me see what i want to say okay let me start out with uh, um a story when i was growing up i had a lot of different animals um my mother uh had cats we'd have a whole bunch of cats you know they'd come and go you know they'd die or um, she'd have them put down, but there was this one cat that she really, really liked, and it was a Russian blue. It was a beautiful animal, and that animal, uh, she didn't have the heart to um, put it down, and the animal eventually ended up um, dying. I remember watching this as a kid, and the cats, like, they really, 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 really <laughs> really loved this woman. They really did. We had, I think, a total of ten, nine, ten cats. That was her world. Those cats were more important to her than we were, sometimes, I would think, because she would, like, make them. They didn't eat regular cat food. She made them gourmet meals. Um, we had dogs. We had cats, you know. And I remember she was so distraught at, at one point, my she would just like lay in her room and cry. And, and it was at the point where my dad actually had to go in and say, you know, you need, you, you have kids to raise or whatever you need to come. You need to, you know, not like, now he wasn't being mean, but he was saying, you know, you have responsibilities. I know you miss the animal, but we need to, we need to move on. Um, Loomis, was that kind of pet for me? I mean, I had a lot of different cats when I was when I was a teenager. I had cats, and what's really interesting with that was that when I'd come home from work or something, when I when I was growing up, I looked for my cats, and they would like disappear. So it was interesting about why that would happen. Um, I didn't have cats at a certain time in my life because the person in my life was allergic to cats, so we didn't have any pets. Um, when I got Loomis, he was like the runt of the litter, and he was so young, he didn't even know how to feed himself. I remember having to teach him how to eat. And it was a gift that I had gotten that I got from my son for his birthday. We had another cat too, and that one had issues, so I'm not going to go into that story. Um, but you know, like how, how a boy has a dog. This cat was his cat, and but the cat was like, you know, I don't want to say it was his cat. I want to say more it was like my cat because I was the one who took care of it. It was one of those situations where the person would say, yeah, you give me a cat, I'll take care of it, da, da, da. Well, ended up, I'm, I was the one who ended up taking care of the animal. And, um, but 
that cat was more acted more like a dog than a cat and and Loomis was like one of those animals that you and those of you who are cat people will know what I'm talking about or even people who know had pets there's always that one animal that stands out that there, you know excuse me you know you're never going to find another animal like that um, he was like a watchdog. There was one time when someone tried to break into the apartment and Loomis was like acting crazy and he was meowing. I mean, he wasn't meowing. He was like meowing, like, I went in the room and there was some guy trying to crawl in our window and Loomis had warned us. So I came in and, and the person left, but he was always like there, you know? And then a couple of times, like, if you ever see a cat and they're just, like, staring off into space and you can't figure out why, um, a couple of times he would be looking up and then I would, like, okay, and I would look up and there'd be a little spider coming down, you know. And so I would get rid of the spider. And he did that a couple of times. Um, so, I mean, you develop a relationship with an animal that you don't usually develop with another human being. Um, like I said, you know, I don't have many friends, um, the, you know, in, in my life, the way it was, I, I really, at that point, couldn't have friends, um, so the cat, the cats that I had were, they served a purpose where they were my companions, you know, Loomis was, my, he was my, like, my best buddy, I could say. Like, the cat, um, he was there. I'd come home from work. He'd be right at the door waiting for me. In fact, my son, my other son, told me once, because he was home and my other son, I don't know, he was gone or something. I don't know what he was doing. But my son would tell me, you know, Mom, whenever you come home, he knows the sound of your car, and he would jump up at the window and wait for me, and I can be coming around the corner. And he said he knew, he always knows when you're coming. And one time I thought, okay, so I, I never noticed, but I looked up, and there was Loomis sitting in the door in, in the window cell, and the minute I'd get out of the car, you know, I would go, and there would, the cat would be sitting in front of the door waiting for me. And I think at one point, I think he has a video where I'm, I had left and the cat was walking around in front of the door, you know, meowing. Um, but Loomis was one of those kind of cats that you don't get very every day. And, and I guess, too, because I've had him for such a long time. Um, he would, like... What would he do? Um, if I, I was upset or I was crying or I was sick, he always came and slept next to me. Um, you know, he knew. And when Loomis got sick, I mean, I had the cat for a long time, and he was never sick. He was never sick. Um, and I think there were other circumstances that led to his illness. And as long as I live, I'll never reveal that. But um, I knew, it, it, and it was all timing. It, and the pandemic had hit, and everything was shut down. And so within that time limit, Within that time window of time, you know, I wasn't able to do anything for the animal. And um, after hearing some people talk about, you know, dropping off the animal and not being able to go in, I wasn't, I also, you know, after I wasn't going to be, I wasn't going to do that either because, you know, I didn't feel comfortable just leaving my animal and then having somebody handle them and not, me not be there. So, um, I don't know what, what happened, but even, even though, like, through the pandemic, he was there for me, you know, we'd sit together, like, every morning, um, 
he'd have a little cat stand and he'd sit in the cat stand and I'd be by the window and I'd have my coffee. He was my coffee mate, you know what I mean? He would sit and enjoy the sun because I would get a place that had a window so he could sit in the window. And he would sit and um, enjoy the sun and, um, you know, and um, I would sit. Now, he wasn't a lap cat. He wasn't kind of those cats that you could, you know, like you could hold him, but he wasn't that kind of a cuddly cat. But as time went on, um, he would, like, especially if I was upset or something, he would come up to me and, like, you know, hit, hit, bent, you know, hit me with his head, head bump me in my leg, or he would, like, come up and, like, tap me on my knee, and he wanted to come up and sit in my lap. Um, when it's going to be really hard, so bear with me. When my son left, and I found out because nobody had told me, and um, I think I'd done a video on that, and he took his his girl and their grandchild. That was devastating. And I spent... Many days crying over that. <sighs> Loomis helped me get through that. And I know children grow up and they do things and they move on and whatever, but I think the way it was done and I think the way it was handled and the fact that people knew and didn't share that information with me, um, that made me angry, but then it all, you know, I also knew that I also knew that I'd probably never see the child again, and I'd probably never see my son again, and I was able to work through that. Let me get a drink of coffee here. I just say I need a lot of caffeine. Uh, they say the third day is the hardest. Um, and he helped me through that. But the day when, because it was so abrupt, I wasn't expecting it. Um, the way, the way Loomis was, things happened with Loomis. I wasn't expecting that to happen. He was, we were here, he was sitting in the, like I had gotten this place that has a big balcony and he would love to go out and sit in the sun and now that the sun is coming out, he's not here to enjoy it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he would like sit at the window. Um, I think in our society, I mean, I knew the, the cat was eventually going to go. I just, I had chosen um, not to um, euthanize it, but sometimes other people make choices for you, whether you want to do it or not. So that was done. And I remember... the emptiness when I came home of him not to be here. But he was really far gone and I, I knew he was, but it like it, with him taking him down there and everything and moving him around, I think it accelerated everything. And you know, here's a cat one moment enjoying the sun, whatever time he has left, and then he's dragged into a, a veterinarian. You know, just his life is like poofed. It's gone. And anyway, everybody handles things a different way, but I think my son expected that they were going to cure him. You know how sometimes people are desperate and they 
you know, I I already had accept, accepted the fact that the cat was going to be gone. I knew that. I knew what was happening. But my son was like, uh, apparently he had made other, um, he had had plans that I didn't, wasn't informed of. So when they told us that, that there was nothing they could do for the animal, that the only thing they could do was put him down, you know, he burst out crying. And I've never seen my son cry the way I saw him cry. Because, you know, that was his cat. And uh, I would have taken him home and let him, but, you know, everybody is different. Um, I think being with a mother who grew up on a farm, you didn't have, you know, you didn't think of an animal like that, but you thought of them, you know, you thought of them, but it was, a, you looked at death in a different way. And um, he was trying to extend the animal's life and they said, we can't really do it. And I knew the animal was, was gone, but I didn't see the animal was suffering. I, I mean... Maybe that was my fault. I don't know, but he was, but he was put down, and we ended up leaving. And me coming back um, to nothing, you know. And I told him, I said, you know, you're with somebody. You you got your he's rooming with other people, you know, whatever. I said, but you're sending me back with nothing. I have nothing now. Um. And I hope you guys don't pass judgment on me harshly, but that's just the way I was saw, and that's just the way I was raised. Like I said, uh, you know, um, a lot of things that people do for animals now, and you know, all the they dress them all up and things like that, and and treat them like whatever. It's you know, that's not me, but I know the connection I felt with that animal, and. When he was gone, when he was gone, I felt more pain with him going than I did with my son going. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like, you know, <laughs> don't think bad of me, but I think if I had a choice of having my son back or the cat, I'd probably have the cat because the cat accepted me as who I am. The cat didn't um, judge me. The cat liked me for who I was. You know, the cat was there and the cat knew if I felt bad or whatever. And when I went through the ordeal of what was going on earlier, um, and I'm not going to go into detail, but some of you know what I went through, that cat was there. And I, I'm, I'm grateful that God graced me with such a great animal. And I see Loomis as a gift. But if you ever had a flower or a plant, a flower, you know, grows up, blooms, or whatever, and then it withers away and dies. <laughs> it's like that. <sighs> now, I had, I know a couple of people on YouTube who were there for me. And, uh, one of them called me up and we talked for about a couple hours and she was there and I appreciate her because when you talk to another person who loves cats and they've lost an animal too, they know what you're going through. And just talking to her and sharing my feelings and not hearing this stuff like, oh, move on or whatever, you know. You know, it was like, she was like, it's, it'll take time. You know, it's going to hurt for a while, but it'll take time. And, and she's right. And, but I, I'm so grateful to her. And I'm another person who's like been texting me and everything and, and checking up on me and ask, making sure I'm okay. You know, when you're a cat person, you understand, you get that. 
and I got a lot of good, I have a lot of heartfelt comments from people from seeing the other video. Um, so I appreciate that. And then I started watching videos on YouTube of people who lost cats. And, you know, I, it, it's really painful, but you know you're not crazy when you feel that strongly about an animal. I mean, you just, you, you know, there's just a connection there. Um, I mean, when, like, you know, you just, there's just a connection there. There's something there between you and that animal, you know. And the thing is, is that what made it harder was... was the pandemic hasn't made things easier. Um, my son asked me, you know, he said, um, are you going to get another pet? Are you going to get another cat? And I said, yeah, I'll probably get another cat because I've always had cats and I love having cats. And he asked me, why don't I get a dog? And I said, no, I'm not getting a dog because a dog you got to take out and walk, a dog you got to, you know, and there's, there's and no offense to any of you who own dogs, but you can't pay me enough to pick up shit in the middle of the street or whatever, out in public, after a dog is taking a dump. I'm sorry. Um, that's what, you know, if I had a house with a yard, then I'd have a dog. Um, but in an apartment, no, it, it wouldn't be fair to the animal, to me anyway. Uh, a cat, you know, you could, you know, they don't mind. Loomis was a strictly indoor cat. I'm fortunate that he lived as long as he did. He was like, you know, 14 years old, that's pretty old for a cat. They live between 12 to 16, I think it is. And if they're lucky, they get to be in their 20s. Um, but he was relatively a good cat. And some of you who know me and, uh, and know, have followed me with Loomis, um, know that Loomis, one thing about Loomis is like, he liked to tear up my bags. You know, I do a lot of do handbags and stuff. So, one of the things he would do, and I loved doing this, collecting was getting charms and stuff for my handbags. And I used to get these Michael Kor ones. Well, I don't know how it happened. I guess because I laid my bag on the floor or something. Loomis would get them and he'd tear them up and they'd end up like this. So he would end up, these are what I have left. Um, I still have his cat. Uh, ladder thingy, his cat post. I still have his his other toys that he played with. I have his cat brush. Um, I just don't have it in me right now to get rid of them, and I may never get rid of them. Um, the cat post I'll probably clean up real good and and save it for the next cat. And um, I did get rid of the litter box because you when you do get a new cat you don't keep the same litter box when a cat smells another cat unless you already have a group of cats um a cat won't use another litter box because he smells the other cat and you, you kind of drive the other cat crazy because he'll be looking around looking for your cat if there's another cat in the area so you know and right now it's really hard to find an animal because of the pandemic and all these animals are kind of taken away and and like if I went to the animal shelter, I have to like make an appointment, then I have to go through an interview, um, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm like, uh, uh, you know, you guys want people to find cats, but then you're going to make it harder for them. I'm like, it's ridiculous. So I'm hoping some way or another I'll find a pet somewhere. Um, but Loomis was, you know, he was my best buddy. He was like there for me, you know. And at the point when he got really sick, I he couldn't jump on my cot anymore. So what I did um, was I started sleeping on the floor. And I mean, who does that, right? Um, my son had given me a uh, like a, a foam padding that I would use for my cot. Um, so what I did was I put that on the floor and put a sheet over it and I would lay down so that Loomis could like sleep next to me because he was, it was getting harder and harder for him to walk. But it, 
made him happy to be able to sleep next to me. And sometimes I could hear him snore or, you know, but he, it made him, it gave him comfort. Because my son came in, he goes, where's your bed? And I said, oh, I sleep on the floor. And he thought I was crazy. And I said, I did that for the animal. I did that for Loomis. And he thought I was crazy. He goes, well, I, I wouldn't sleep on the floor. And I said, well, that's the difference. I would. And I did, I slept on the floor. And it would make, it would make Loomis feel better. Sometimes I, when I go and start setting up, he already knew what was going to go on. And I get, I get ready and set up and I would get changed or whatever. And he already beat me to the bed. He already had the whole, he was like, oh, it's mine. I'm going to sleep sleeping in the middle. And those of you who have cats will know what I'm talking about. They'll like take the prime place, right? So, I mean, when I look back, I have a lot of pictures and stuff. Um, I don't know how to make a sideshow, slideshow, or I would do that. Um, but I may do something like that for him because he was such a great cat and even though he he liked stealing my little poofy balls um there's never going to be i don't think in my life there's going to be another i'm ever going to find another cat like that <laughs> the other day i was going to vacuum the floor I think it was yesterday. And out of habit, this is when it hits you. When you have that moment and it hits you like, he's really gone. I was getting ready to vacuum the floor and my first instinct was, I went into the closet to make sure he was there so I can close the door because he was afraid of the vacuum. And then I realized, oh, <laughs> he's not here. And that really, that, that really, it really stung. And in the evenings, you know, like when you're alone, that's also when it comes back, that emptiness. Because Loomis, the other thing Loomis used to do, he used to sit and watch TV. Even if I didn't watch TV, he would sit and watch TV. <laughs> I mean, I have a video where he would go in and, and, and I have videos of him where he will go in and sit and watch TV. He would actually watch TV and I made a video of it because one of, pe one of the people at work didn't believe me. I said, my cat watches TV and they're like, yeah, right. So I actually made a video, brought it in, showed my friend, well, none of them are my friends now because not one person has called me to see how I'm doing. Um, and that's another thing about work, like people who are your friends there are no longer your friends. Um, but I showed a picture and the cat walks in the room or sits down, sits down and he starts watching TV. Um, but that's another thing Lumos would do and we'd sit at night and, you know, I'd eat dinner, you know, He'd watch TV with me or he'd go in the front of the screen and watch TV. So I'd be watching TV and have two ears in front of the screen. Um, you know, I'd open a can of tuna and then, you know how you like put the can opener and it makes that sound when you break into the, the, the metal and you're like, boom, Loomis would be right under my feet waiting for his little piece of tuna, you know, um, I've got a whole bag of cat food I don't know what to do with. And I've got his dish and his water and I haven't been able to move that yet because it's just too painful right now. And I have a pair of pajamas with all his cat hair all over it. I know as time goes by, I'll be able to let go. But right now it's just so hard.
but I do the, the best I can. And, you know, but anyway, I wanted to share that with you. And one video I watched, it was really powerful. It was by this guy. I'm not really familiar with him, but he's famous. Some guy named Russell Brandt. And he did a video, he did a video where his cat had died. And he was talking about the impact that that one cat had on him. And it, those of you who have cats and have lost a cat that you really loved, you know, you you feel for that. And there's another video, too, of another guy who talked about losing his cat. And they get it, you know. It's like, you know, the videos help because I didn't feel like I was the only one who, like, I don't want people to think like I'm a crazy cat lady or something. But, I mean, all I want is just one cat. I don't need 30. One is enough because that's all, you know, They a, a good cat is a good cat. And... I, would, I want to thank those people who wrote to me and left me a kind comment and to my friends who text me and to my friend who called me and was willing to spend the couple hours of her life um, telling me, sharing with me and letting me just let out my feelings because um, the whole thing was really unexpected, you know. Um, I wasn't expecting that soon to have what happened happen. But, you know, I thank God every day for that cat. Anyway, I appreciate you, all of you listening. And I'll have more videos up. I was going to do a video on handbags, but right now I just I just don't have it in me right now. Um, just give me a couple of days, and then I'll go ahead and do that, okay? So you all have a good one, and um, I'll talk to you soon. All right? Bye.